I forgot to video earlier this morning when I woke up. Actually, I might have. Honestly, I don't remember. I woke up at 4.30 and um, went to work. It is now 11.15 and I just pulled up to my driveway. So I'm gonna start setting up for the test. I'm gonna go inside because I don't have that much time. I basically have to log in in 15 minutes and I just got home. I have to like set up the room, make sure it's all good. I'm kind of nervous, not even gonna lie, not gonna lie. All right, so I'm gonna go inside really quick and do some last minute English review, like super last minute, <laughs> literally last minute review. I'll see you after the test. Okay, so it is um, 2.19, I just finished my test. Um, so I logged in around like 11.30 um, and then I did my dry run literally right before I took the test. It gave you, so basically just like walks you through how to um, download Proctorio, how to allow like camera and microphone, how to share your screen. And then it gave you just like three sample questions. And then when you like three, like ridiculously easy questions that had nothing to do with ADITs, you don't need to study for it. It's not gonna be graded or sent to anything. And then um, you, so then, you know, it shows you your grade, what your grade would look like. Since I, I took a two practice tests last night, I know what that process is, except the practice tests tell you, you got a question right or wrong as soon as you answer it. And that made me so anxious. I hated that because then I kept, I was keeping track in my head of how many questions I was getting wrong. So it just like made me so anxious. So um, the actual test does not do that, don't worry. You know, also it also shows you how to do the room scan, how to scan your ID, it shows you everything, um, except the actual test itself. So it's like a great tool to use the day before, day of your remote proctoring exam. Um, and then, so my experience was really freaking scary because halfway through my math exam, I got logged out of my test and I was like, I was freaking out. I was like, did they think I was cheating? Like what happened? Cause I like talked to myself and I was like, you know, repeating the questions to myself. I just, I read everything that's on the screen so I can like comprehend it better. And then I'm like, wait, do they need to see the paper that I'm writing? Do they need to make sure I'm like not reading something? Like I was so scared because like the instructions are to clearly see your shoulders and your head, which I was doing. So when I'm looking down and I'm like writing something, I'm like, maybe someone's watching me. They think that I'm like reading how to do a problem or something. Cause I'm like literally saying everything out as I'm doing it. And I was so scared and it logged me out and it's like, okay, your test has ended and it's logged out. I'm like, <laughs> and so I panicked and, but I called the ATI testing, like customer service and support center or something. And she was, get, she was able to get me back into my test. Thank freaking God. Obviously I wasn't cheating, but like that scared me so much. So then I took the rest of the test and um, that was so scary. I'm like literally thinking about it, like made my heart like stop. Um, initial impressions of the test before I see my score, I thought it went pretty well. The English section, I know I'm shaky on, but um, science was okay. Math was fine, reading was fine. So let's see what I got, oh my God. Um, so how do I see my score? I don't know. It said, oh, my results. That would make the most sense. I'm so scared. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. All right. I got 100% in math. Like what? <laughs> what the actual hell? I got 100% in math. Um, my, my individual score is an 86. Um, I got, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I got an 80.9 in reading, 100% in math, 83.0 in science, yikes, and a 75% in English. So, um, national percentiles. So I'm in the 96th percentile, apparently. I'm advanced. Um... My national percentile for reading is 75. Math is 99. Science, I got an 83, which is the 95th percentile, which I guess is pretty good. English is 79. So math and science I'm really strong in. Reading and English, I knew that was going to be weaker. Um, but I can't believe I got 100%. I got a perfect score in math. Go me! So I don't know 
what this means. This means I'm proficient in English and not advanced. There was literally a question and I was like, what is this? Um, so I guess I will write my, I'll, I'll like go over it. Now that I know like what, not, obviously I'm not going to say the exact questions, but I'm going to definitely discuss the topics that came up on my test. And I was like, what is this? I can't believe I got in the 99th. I got a per, I can't believe I got a perfect score in math. Like how does it even happen? Yeah, I did booty cheeks for the English, but it's fine. <laughs> I can't get over this. Um, I guess it wasn't as bad as I thought. I legit got a perfect score in math. Like, I can't get over that. And, like, I don't want to come across as, like, but, oh, I only got a B plus. But, like, <laughs> when it when it comes to, like, this being the deciding factor if I get into nursing school, I want to do, like, my very best, you know? Like, I want to get the most points on my rubric score because that's how they do it. Like, um, so basically my program that I'm applying to, the way that they do it is, um, let me just pull up my computer actually. So I'm just reading off their website. So it adds up to a hundred. The students with the top rubric scores get in. They just do it in the order of, you know, top one, top two, top three, top four. And that's how they offer seats. There are 56 seats per campus. I applied to both campuses to double my chances of getting in, hopefully. Um, so if you got an overall of advanced, you got a 20. If you get an overall of exemplary, you get a 25. If you get an overall of, of proficient, you get nothing. So I, at this point, have 20 for that category. Um, for the subscale scores, so like the individual scores, um, I would get 10 points for reading and science, 12 points for math, and then um, eight points for English. So if you score between a 50 and 59 percent, you get one point. If you get 60 to 69 percent, you get seven points. If you get 70 to 89, seven, sorry, 70 to 79 percent, you get eight points. If you get 80 to 89 percent, you get 10 points. 90 to 99 percent is 12 points. Yeah, I'm getting 40 out of 48 points. Oh, so I have 60 points right now. And then I have an addition of two points that is earned if the only one attempt is used. So I'm, right now I'm sitting at 62. And then for relevant coursework, basically, um, if you took anatomy, physiology, one, NP2, standard freshman comp, intro to literature, microbio, or statistics, um, depending on your grade, um, you can get 24 points for relevant coursework. I have none of those classes. Um, so that's super fun. So that's why I'm so nervous. And then I did take intro, intro to psychology when I was at school for my, the one semester I did. So I get 0.25 of a point for that. So my total rubric score out of 100 is 62.5, which is scary. Like that's so scary. Um, because again, like I'm thinking of this coming from a, you know, person who's always had like 80 out of 100 or something and like you know 80 or higher basically and for me to have like a 62 I'm like that's failing I'm not gonna get in so my brain is just like freaking out but then when we really think about like I guess how well I actually did on the test like it's it seems good but the number just the number 62 out of 100 like that's so scary so I don't know like I don't know so it's like the night after or night of night night of the test I guess after I took it so I took my test it's nighttime now it's like well it's 1 a.m um <laughs> I guess it's stuck on me morning but like you know you know what I mean um it's pretty much fully processed my test it was very stressful I'm relieved that it's over at least for now um I've decided at least as of right now not gonna take it again for this application cycle just gonna let it rock let it sit um the reason why is because one i'm thinking i'm hoping that my score is good enough to stand by itself two um even if it doesn't i'm still applying to a four-year program um to see if i could just get my bsn in four years I would get my BSN in four years anyway, even if I went, if even if I did my ADN first, but going the, you know, BSN route, not the end of the world. And then I have a lot more control over my prerequisite courses. So like, I'm not worried. 
And then plan C is to do an LPN program instead, which is probably not gonna happen. I, I'll just see where I'm at in a few months around like Christmas time. Um, Cause that's like around like the time when I'd have to like really figure out what I'm doing or at least like where my plans to apply is. So um, right now, like I already sent in my application to the program that I really wanna get into. Um, I pretty much have everything done for the application for the BSN program. I just didn't submit it. Well, it, I'm not, okay, so I, I shouldn't say BSN program. Like the way that I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with is you enter, you know, college as a freshman. You're not a nursing student until you, I guess, are in your junior year and you're admitted to the School of Nursing. So, and then that is, then you're like a nursing student and then you're in the BSN program. So I would just apply to like a regular four-year school and then after two years you know apply to nursing schools for bsns and just do that so um at that point you know i would have a lot more courses under my belt if it really came down to it i can apply to both bsn and adn programs get my rn it's just going to take a little bit longer um or i could do lpn that takes two years and then do the same. I just ended up in the same spot anyway. So like, it's really just how much time do I want to spend getting my degree? That is the only difference really. Um, because LPN would take, I believe the program I'm looking to for LPN takes two years. Um, so like, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. So yeah, I'm thinking about that. Um, at first I was like, oh, I'll to be like an EKG technician or a CNA, but my current job is really good with scheduling and flexibility, flexibility and I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to probably stick with it for like a while until I become a nurse or until school gets too bad where I have to like reduce my hours. But right now I'm working full time, so um, the flexibility is great. It's really good to have a job like that. Like I don't want to lose that, you know. I don't want to be, get locked into like a nine to five for an EKG technician or something. And then I'm in school and then it's just sucky. And then I need to get another job anyway. So it's like, I don't want to do that. I mean, I could possibly go for CNA, but like, I don't know. I just have to think about it. So oh, thank you guys so much for watching. Super appreciate all of you. Thank you for coming along on my nursing journey with me and I will see you next time.